Lord, help me to hold out. Yeah. In these times that we have in our lives, sometimes they're good and sometimes we call them bad. Mm -hmm. But they are always times in our lives that bring about different things in our lives and different changes. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. In your own way. Heavenly Father, I come before this morning, O oh God. I'm only bowing and yielding myself unto you, O oh Lord. That this prayer that I'm going to pray, O oh Lord, will somehow reach your ears and you will be able to understand what I'm trying to say. Lord, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy, O oh Lord. Thank you for how you bring us through time after time, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, who came and brought salvation into this world. Thank you, Lord, and into my soul. But, Lord, sometimes I look around and there are all of the situations and the killings and the murders and everything that's going on, Lord. I wonder sometimes, where is the love? Yes, Lord. But then I think on you, Lord, and I know that you never leave us off the stage. So I know that the love is still there. So I just thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask you if you would just forgive us of our sins, Lord, and renew in us a rightful spirit, Lord, and humble our hearts and our minds, Lord. Correct them for us, Lord, that we can be obedient to your word and love our neighbors, Lord. There is just so much love needed in this world to live in love. Not only for our brothers and sisters in Christ, oh God, but for the world, oh Lord. Yes. We just ask you to look at our leadership, oh Lord. Yes, sir. Lord bless us and keep us, oh Lord. Yes. But sometimes we wonder what this world is coming to, oh Yes, sir. But we have to realize that you still are in control, oh Lord. And so we thank you for it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for blessing those of us who are able to come out and worship in person. Yes. Thank you, Lord. But thank you, Lord, also for those who will hear your word, believe it, and trust in it, O oh Lord. Yes. And let it become a part of their daily lives. Yes. Because we need your love, O oh God. As we can bless this world in this very special way of life. Only as you know how. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
and degrees. In 1977, he was appointed by President Jimmy Carter to direct more than 250,000 volunteers of action. Lewis filled many key roles in the Civil Rights Movement. In 1965, he participated in the Freedom Rides. He was organized to challenge, this was organized to challenge segregated interstate bus terminals across the South. He helped to organize sit-in luncheons at Capitol. He led the march that was halted by police violence on the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama in 1963. This civil rights movement that became known as Bloody uh, Sunday. This march, the march was doused with gas. The march was doused, hit with billy sticks. They were run over by horses. They were whipped with uh, bull whips. And as a result of this, he suffered a brain fracture. But this event galvanized public opinion and mobilized Congress to pass the Voting Rights Bill, which President Johnson signed into law August 6, 1965. Congressman Lewis was 80 years old when he lost his life to pancreatic cancer. Our voting rights and democracy are now on the line. We must do as the late John Lewis has instructed us to do. We must get into good trouble. We must advocate to stop anti uh, the bills that are against voters, racial motivated gerrymandering, and attack on our folks all across the nation. We must continue to do as John Lewis tell us, told us to do. We must stand up. We must make our voices heard. We must get into good trouble. What good trouble will you get in today? Remember, you are a part of black history. Let us take a moment in silence to remember the legacy of Congressman Lewis, a fighter for freedom, a fighter for civil rights, a believer in good trouble. God bless you. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. And after some long selection from our choir, music and ministry, the next voice you will hear will be our pastor. That's the word we have to Say choir, preach pastor.
put our hands together.
Reverend Powell alluded to that is by the word of God that we are here. You see, we all had a, a ticket to the graveyard during COVID-19. Over 600,000 people took that ticket to the graveyard. Amen. For God's mercy. Yes. Y'all not talking to me. Yes. God's mercy counsel our ticket. Yes. 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 So we have to celebrate the cancellation of the graveyard ticket. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody yes. praise yes. God. Yes. So that leads me to that scripture, Reverend Paul, that you read so eloquently in our hearing from that book of Acts of the Apostle. Those who still have the Bibles open. Leaning on the word of God. Acts chapter number five. And I just want to read one verse out of a few verses that Reverend Powell read. Verse number 42 of Acts chapter five. Uh, from the New International Version it reads. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house. They never stop teaching. They never stop teaching. They never stop teaching. And proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the word of God for the people of God. And I want to talk to you a few minutes or this morning and certainly with the help of the Holy Spirit from this thought. Never quit. Never give up. Never quit. Never give up. And I walk with the Lord Jesus. It feels like we are always struggling to survive. Some of us that are watching and are here this morning are facing trials. Some of you are facing tribulations that weigh heavy on your heart and in your mind. Yes, there are many times, brothers and sisters, when the mountains are very high and then there are times when the valleys are very low. Sometimes in our ministries or in our calling to Christ, we come to the point where we feel like throwing in the towel and calling it quits. I know there are many times in my ministry where I just said, God, it's not worth it anymore. It's time for me to hang up my pastoral towel. It's time for me to hang up my teaching towel and go on and do something else. We all feel like calling it quits every now and then. And somebody in this sanctuary, somebody that's watching, somebody that's listening to me, you should understand that sometimes when the burdens of life get too hard to bear, whether you're saved or whether you're unsaved, sometimes it weighs heavy on our minds and in our hearts to say, is what I'm doing for God worth it? Mm -hmm. Y'all pray with me here. Most of us have experienced what it means to try we try our best, Brother Thomas, to live right. That's right. Mm -hmm. However, we find ourselves in a fight for our livelihood. We find ourselves in a fight for our family and our children. Mm -hmm. We find ourselves in a fight to save our church, uh -huh. our friendship relationship, and even to have just a peace of mind to get sleep at night. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. In this trying season of COVID-19, our struggle sometimes seems hopeless. Our burden sometimes seems a little heavy. Yes, it is almost like we're in a fight that we cannot win on our own. Yet after thinking it over, hmm. and after coming to some decisions in my mind, after contemplating it, and after praying about it, we conclude that we need somebody more substantial than us. We need somebody that can make a way out of it. Yes. 
We need somebody that's able through the storms and through the rains of our personal life. We need somebody that can see us through. Yeah. And in our text this morning, the reign of God was at hand and the church community came together. They came together in fellowship and in love. Yeah. I'm talking about the church community now. The promised Holy Spirit entered in on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit invited the followers of Jesus to go out to their local community and teach the message of repentance and witness to the saving grace of God. Yeah. You see, brothers and sisters, according to Acts chapter 3, verse 15, Israel, God's covenant people, they needed restoration. Uh, Acts 3, 15 says, they killed the prince of life, delivered him up, Deny him in the presence of power. In other words, they say we have no other king but power. So they denied that God was their king and they needed to be restored. Yeah. And the Gentiles needed to hear the good news that God is an inclusive God and his grace is for all who call on his holy and his righteous name. Yeah. The local community of Jerusalem and the surrounding cities believe in the gospel message. And the Bible teaches us in Acts that the church grew numerically. According to the gospel of Luke, the believers had all things in common. They sold their possessions of houses and the land to help those who were disenfranchised. They sold their property to help the poor. They had all things in common. Yeah. Kind of get a witness here. Yeah. According to the book of Luke, the apostles performed many signs. They performed many wonders. They tell me in Acts that the lame people began to walk again. People were added to the church. People were healed. The Bible said whenever Peter's shadow went by, the people walked in Peter's shadow, that the people were healed. Yet, while all of this excitement was taking place, Jealousy, you see. The Bible says whatever we do good, evil is always there. It's always there. Uh, jealousy rose among the Sanhedrin. Also the lives of Ananias and Sapphira interrupted the unity in the community, but the Jesus movement continued, and when the Jesus movement continued, it continued with two things. It continued with power and with purpose. Can you say power, power. and purpose? As Luke takes us back to this time, he reveals to us that God's promise to restore Israel was on the horizon. But here again, brothers and sisters, there was another severe interruption that tried to halt or to stop the reign of God. The hierarchy of spiritual power, the Bible teaches the uh, Sadducees of Israel, they felt threatened by the popularity of the apostles. And if they did nothing, they could lose their influence, they could lose their authority, they could lose their control over the people. Why? Because the Jesus movement was moving with power and it was moving with purpose. And I want to tell you, I'm going to stop to remind you that any time that the church of God begins to threaten someone's power and authority, you better get ready for the same thing. Because there's some people that sit in the seats of authority. There's some people that sit in the seats of power. They're not born again. Y'all think and whenever Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, begins to move in the church and begins to move in the life of people, you better get ready to, 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 to receive what the apostles are about to receive because everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. Furthermore, the good news of Jesus was spreading like wildfire and would become more favorable than the work demands of the law. Because of this impending shift in leadership, the religious establishment decided to arrest the apostles. See, whatever action there is a reaction, whatever there is a power, there is an effect. And so by the preaching and the purpose and the power of the Holy Spirit moving, the people in the church decided 
to arrest the men of God. Now, that may sound kind of strange. Will people in the church arrest men of God? That, that doesn't equate, that doesn't work out for me. Listen, they decided to arrest the apostles and demanded them, listen, not only are we going to arrest you, but we're going to tell you, don't you ever, ever preach or teach no witness in the name of of Jesus. In other words, stop me. Mm -hmm. Y'all look at him. I can't see y'all behind those masks, but y'all look at him. <laughs> it doesn't take all of that. Yeah. Quiet down. Simmer down. You don't take all that singing. You don't take all that preaching. You don't take all that teaching. You don't take all that wishing. Quiet down. Because if you don't quiet down, something about you. Well, listen, let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me share it. I'm going to let you know when I let you know. Let me share it with you. If you don't want me to praise God in church, God bless my cabin with a big old parking lot out there. I tell Thomas to get that uh, thing right there. I tell him to get my choir member to let go outside and leave the church with and we're going to praise the Lord. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. That's it, don't you ever preach and teach and witness in that name, Jesus, no more. But the Bible says, this is how God works. I'm going to get back to the whole The Bible says that when they put the apostles in prison, mm -hmm. you see, you can't stop God when God starts to move. You can't stop. Yeah. You can't halt the power and the purpose of God that lives in you. You can't not stop it. So the Bible tells me during the night. Yes, and that's what I like about God. When the hustle and bustle of the days are over and sometimes you can't sleep at night, that's because that's God is trying to see something. Yes, see, sometimes brothers and sisters that's watching, sometimes those who are listening, those who are in my carriage this morning, sometimes we can't hear God when you got so much stuff going on. I got to deal with these folk on my job. They getting on my nerves. I got to deal with my family. I got to feed my children. Can I get a witness? I got to go to the grocery store. I got to go to the mall. Can I get a witness? I got to watch gun smoke on TV. I got so much stuff going on in my life that God is trying to speak expressly to the church that we can't handle because we got so much stuff that interrupts the flow of what God is trying to say. But the Bible says that it was at midnight. It said an angel of the Lord set them free. And when the angel of the Lord set them free, brothers and sisters, the angel says, go. Go back to the temple. Go back to the court. And continue to tell people about a new life in Christ. The religious establishment went to the jail. They said, go to the jail and bring the apostles. But when they went to go try to retrieve the apostles, the Bible says they were not the report was that the prison was securely locked. Listen, y'all, this is how God works. Listen closely. The Bible says when they got there, they said that the prison was locked like it was before. The Bible teaches us that there were the guards that were still on duty like they were before. But there was something different. Although the jail was securely locked, Although the guards were still on duty, there were some people that were not there, and that was the apostles. Why, you may ask? Because the angel of the Lord came down in a miraculous way and set them free. This news caused the religious establishment to be confused and that it lost for words. And let me say this before I take my seat, brothers and sisters, that the miracles of God, right, the miracles of God usually leaves unbelievers bewildered. It's not easy to explain how the supernatural overpowers the natural. It's not easy to explain that last year I was sick, but all of a sudden God has made me well. How does that happen? It doesn't make sense for the righteous to die for the unrighteous, but God did it. And some folks try to explain how the supernatural works in the natural, but if you're an unbeliever, it never works for you. Yeah. Wow. 
But I am a living witness that God can do the impossible. Can I get a witness? He can blow and split red seas. He can cause Jericho walls to come down. He can cause men that have been dead for four days to get up out of their sleep. He can cause little girls that will sleep to get up out of her death sleep. God can do whatever he wants to do and leave everybody be doing it. Has anybody ever been through that? He said, well, Pastor got me right. Because when God does so much for me, when I was about ready to quit and throw in the towel on life, God touched me. He touched my mind. He touched my heart. I was about to say, it ain't worth it. But when God got through with me, I can't do nothing but praise him. Can I get a witness? However, they tell me that the men of God, they went back at the temple's court. And they did exactly what they were told not to do by the religious authority. They did what God told them to do. He said, that's what gets us in trouble, Brother Thomas, because, uh, Reverend Paul, because when you begin to obey God, listen, I'm talking about truly obey God. I'm talking about truly, really, authentically uh, obey God. It gets us in trouble with humanity. Because usually humanity really don't want to hear what God has to say. Listen, the Bible teaches that the Sanhedrin and the high priest, they got these men, they began to interrogate them to determine why they defiled their orders to stop teaching Jesus. Did you hear what we said? You know, I hate when people try to talk to me like they're my mom and my daddy. They ain't my mom and my daddy. You don't kind of tell me. God tell me one thing and you're trying to tell me something else. They were trying to interrogate them and say, did we tell you to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. But I gotta tell you something, brothers and sisters. Listen, I can't help but call his name. Because at his name, every knee should bow and every tongue shall confess. At his name, the devil and the demons in hell, they tremble at his name. We got to teach him. We got to sing about him. We got to preach about him. Not only teaching and preaching and singing, but we got to live like we know him. Listen, listen, I'm not talking about just knowing God. Everybody knows that there's a divine power somewhere. Everybody knows something. But I'm talking about having a relationship. See, we should have so much of a relationship with God that we can call God whenever we need to. Anybody ever call God late in the midnight hour? I mean, you had those tears. Yes, amen. You had those tears rolling down in the midnight hour. You toss and turn all night long. You say, well, I know I got to go to work tomorrow. I got to get up and work on that man's job. And I can't get no sleep. Listen, and God is messing with me. The Holy Spirit is irritating me. The, the Holy Spirit is purpose driving me to something I must do. And I can't help it. I know they tell me that I can't really talk about Jesus on my job. But they can't stop me from closing my eyes just for a few minutes. Can I get a witness? They can't stop me from writing a little Bible verse on my notepad. They can't stop me from looking at my phone a little bit and reading a little bit about the scripture about how God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. They can't stop me from doing that because I would not have this job if it had not been for Jesus. That makes sense. This. Peter replied, listen, this is what I like what Peter said. He said, we must obey God rather than you. This. Peter reminded them that the religious leaders were responsible. You were responsible for the death of Jesus. And this news angered them to the point of wanting to put them to death. But Gamaliel, the revered Pharisee, warned them not to be too hasty in their decision because if these men are from God, he says, you will not be able to stop them. And that's why I want to stop there and say, if you are from God, the devil in hell can't stop you. Amen. It can't stop you from serving the Lord. Listen, it says here, because when people try to stop and fight against God, listen, whenever you find people that stop you from trying to praise the Lord, whatever people say, we'll take on that. Listen, and you know that the Lord has been good to you. I mean, I'm talking about, you know in your heart, it ain't that nobody told you. It ain't that nobody suggested to you. You know people that are watching me, listen, you know that God has really been good to you. Who will stop you from praising the Lord? Y'all understand? Listen, you can't stop them. Listen, whenever you try to fight against God, it's a fight we would never have. Yeah. Yeah. So this speech persuaded them. 
They called the apostles there to have them flock. They ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and then they let them go. Mm -hmm. The apostles left the Sanhedrin. Listen, when they, listen, Reverend Paul, they just got beat. So the Sanhedrin, they just got beat. But the Bible says they rejoiced. That don't make sense. You see what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? I'm, I'm done. Listen, that doesn't make sense. How can you get beat physically and still rejoice spiritually? <laughs> Because they had been counted worthy of suffering, disgrace for his name. Mm -hmm. Then they say, the last verse says, day after day, in the temple, day after day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, day after day, in the temple, of course, and from house to house. So they took the word of the Lord, not only in the church experience, but they went from house to house. Because I said earlier, they had a whole thing to they never stopped teaching and proclaimed the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. So in other words, they never quit and they never gave up. And we too this morning should never quit, nor should we give up. And I know how you feel, brothers and sisters, but we should never quit, nor should we give up. And I know every now and then, we get tired of laboring in the harvest field for the Lord where people burden us down. But remember, never quit. Never give up. Yeah. I know we get weary on this Christian journey. Sometimes up and sometimes down. But we should never quit. And we should never give up. Yeah. I know we are worn out in the struggle to live right. I know we're worn out in the struggle to try to live holy among unholy people. But never quit. And never get up. I know sometimes we get upset trying to raise our children the right way. And they seem not to hear us but never quit and never give up. I know we get tired of seeing and experiencing the, dis the disorder and dysfunction of our government and our society. But never quit nor give up. Like in the early church days, some people would never accept the Jesus that lives inside of you and inside of me. And I know we get depleted of loving someone that doesn't love us back. Sometimes we give all our love to someone. Sometimes we give all our respect to someone. But we're never a recipient of their love and their respect. As a matter of fact, the more we share with them, and as a matter of fact, as the more, as the more we love them, the more they talk about us, the more they misuse us. But we should never quit nor give up. Some people would try to make it so hard for us huh? that we would sit the throne in the towel and call it quits. Huh? But we have to hang on in there huh? because I believe that trouble don't last already. Huh? I believe that the struggle is almost over. Huh? We can never quit, huh? nor should we give up. Huh? We have to remember who possesses us. Huh? Man, don't possess me. Huh? We are possessed by the Holy Spirit. Spirit, and the Holy Spirit to cause us and cause us to trust and obey that God will, He will work it out. And I got some witnesses here this morning. You say, Well, Pastor, because I didn't quit, because I didn't give up, God elevated me. I cannot get a witness. He showed forth His power in my life because I never quit, nor did I give up. Sometimes it got dark. The way, huh? but I never quit, nor did I give up. Huh? When my family turned their back on me, huh? I never quit, nor did I give up. Huh? When my friends huh? walked away from me, huh? I never quit, nor did I give up. Huh? Sometimes I'm up huh? and sometimes I'm down, huh? but I never quit, huh? nor did I give up. Huh? Sometimes I was lied on, huh? and sometimes I was misunderstood, huh? but I never quit, huh? nor did Sometimes, Pastor Gamble, I, I was misused and abused, but I never quit, huh? nor did I give up. Huh? Sometimes things didn't work out my way. Huh? I planned it all year long, huh? but God redirected my plans. Huh? I never gave up, huh? nor did I quit. Because huh? you got to remember that God calls us, huh? and when God calls us, huh? he elects us, huh? and he tells us to tell others huh? that the kingdom of God Never quit, 
nor give up. Because God will see us through. It doesn't matter. Come on, let's give God praise. It doesn't matter. Some people have their heart in their, in their relationships. People have their heart on their jobs. People have their difficult difficulties and their finances and all of these things that we live among. When do we give God an opportunity? And I'm not saying you as believers per se, but I'm talking about those who gave up. Those who walked away. See, it's easy to walk away from a relationship than try to make that relationship work. God never said relationships were going to be easy. No, no, no. In marriages, in friendship relationship, in the church, it's never, ever easy. Because if it was easy, why pray? If it's easy, why trust in God? If it's easy, why did Jesus die on the overrun the cross? If it's going to be easy. God never promised teaching and preaching would be easy. God never promised that living right and living holy would be easy. Amen. God saved us. And when God saves us, he consecrates us. And when God consecrates us, he sanctifies us. That means he sets us apart for holy and righteous. Now, some people may not understand that. So many, so many people may say that's an old spiritual cliche, but no, it's true. When you're born again, you have a relationship with God. Amen. And when you have a relationship with God, you can talk to God about anything. Amen. That's why you should have everybody pray for you that don't know the word of prayer. You know, you put stuff on Facebook, people say, I'm praying for you and stuff. Good, good. We know that's admirable. We understand that. But everybody don't know. You don't know what they're praying. We need people to come together. The Bible says in the first century church, they had all things in common. They gave up some of their possessions, their possessions, so others could have. That's what God wants. That's what God wants from us that are listening and watching and hearing about Carrie today. We're getting ready to go through a post-COVID-19. Scientists and CDC have said that because of natural immunity and those who have maybe gotten shots of the boosters, that now the virus cannot find a host because everybody's been either naturally immune or had immune through shots or whatever. So it has plateaued or it's peaking where hospitalizations are not as many and deaths are not as many. We're still in the season of it, but it's plateauing. In other words, God says, what are you going to do when the storm is What are you going to do? Are you going to keep worshiping the same way? Come on Sunday, blow a little pump, and go home and do nothing? What are you going to do? God says, I sent it for two and a half years. Pharaoh didn't understand. Pharaoh says, at first let my people go, he let them go, then he went back after me. He didn't understand because he was an unbeliever. What are you going to do? Israel got it. After seven years in Babylon, God said, don't have, don't serve other gods. So don't do that. God said, thou shalt not make it to thee any greater image. You shouldn't bow down to it. Thou shalt have no other God before me. And they did exactly what God told them not to do. They went whole and out of other gods. God said, Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, you must go to Babylon for 70 years until you get it right. 70 years they spent in Babylon. Then after Nehemiah came along the cupbearer to the king, they began to build the walls again. 52 days, they built the wall. To they rebuilt it. God says, now what are you going to do after COVID-19 has planted? Maybe there's somebody that's an unbeliever that's watching. Maybe there's somebody that's a believer that's watching. He said, Pastor, I'm going to do something different. This is the difference that I'm going to do in my life. With the help of God. I'm going to give God my life. I'm going to give my home over to God, my children over to God. And I'm going to let God help me to work this situation out. I'm tired of trying to figure out human reasoning. And every time I try to do that, man, I just get myself caught up in just stuff. I'm tired of dealing with stuff. Everybody's tired of just dealing with stuff. Take one step forward, take another step back. Well, I'm tired of that. But I'm going to give God a chance. Here's your opportunity to 
just love on the Lord and let the Lord love on you. He gave his son that we may live. You can type it in. You can call the church office, 919-735-3242. And you can send it to my email address, Galman1. Type it in, brother. Galman1 at AOL.com. And I'll pray for you. We'll pray for each other. Because my desire is for you to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Somebody out there says, well, Pastor, I am saved, but you know, you don't even know what I'm going through, Pastor Young. I'm just, I hear you, Pastor, and I, it's, just, it's, it's just not working for me. I don't know what to do. Well, you know, it's all right. I think we all have been there. But what you got to do is remember who you are and whose you are. You don't belong to yourself anymore. You belong to Christ. Not with the blood of oxen or turtle doves or bullets, but you've been bought with the precious blood of the lamb that was slain in Calvary. And so it's all right. You know, if you doubt God, God is able to remove that doubt. And so I pray for you and pray for you. Anybody here in Mount Calvary, if you stand in the need of prayer, and I think all of us do, would you stand with me as a witness as I pray for all of those who may be unsaved? I want my character to be a praying partner with us. Look at all of us in here. God has been good to us. And we want to show somebody today that God is here. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for your power. Father, we thank you for your love. Father, we thank you for your forgiveness, your grace, and your mercy. Father, we call you and we ask that you will incline your ear to us. As we lift up our brothers and sisters in prayer. Father, this is not a selfish prayer because we know you've been good to us. But this prayer is for others who may not have come to the knowledge of the truth. That to the utmost, Jesus saves. And Father, for those who are struggling, for those who are burning down, we want to tell them to never quit and never give up because there's a better way. His way, through the word, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. His way is that we hide his words in our hearts that we may not sin against God. His words are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. That's his word. His word can save you. His word can heal your condition. His word can brighten up your midnight hour. His word can wipe away tears in the midnight hour. His word can heal the sick. His word can raise up the spiritual dead. His word can give sight to those who are spiritually blind. His word can remove callous hearts. It's his word that can save you this morning. By his stripes, we are healed this morning. And we believe that every strike that Jesus took on his physical body, it heals our brokenness. It heals our wounded spirit. It regulates our confused mind. Every strike that Jesus took headed toward Calvary, it heals us in COVID-19. It heals our family condition. It saves our children and great. Oh, it's right. That Jesus is. It heals us. He heals us here in Mount Calvary. It heals every church that calls on the name of Jesus. It brings the unbelievers to the knowledge of Christ. It gives those who are saved contentment that all is well. We thank you. We thank you that we never quit. And that we never give up. Though it may seem like it's never going to pan out, it's never going to work, but we got to keep on keeping. For one of these old days, God, you're going to show up and you're going to show out. But until that day happens, we're going to lift our hearts and lift our hands and say, thank you. Thank you, God, for you are worthy. Of all of our thanksgiving. You are worthy of all of our praise. We adore you, God. God, we adore you. We ask that you will bless us with an anointing. 
that's so great that when we wake up on Monday morning and be thy will, we can shout for glory that all is well because I never gave up on you. Satan had tried to make us turn our backs on you, Father. Satan in the scheme of the enemy tried to plant us in our home and in our finances and in our churches. Satan! I call you Satan because you're a liar. And you've been alive from the beginning of time. But I believe that there's a power. A power. That springs forth. That comes down from heaven. That showers upon, upon us, Lord. And we thank you for the Holy Ghost. Satan, you are liar. Satan, we decree by the power of Jesus Christ to get thee behind us. And let the will of the Lord be done. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together and give God.